That is called the building functions in MATLAB. And this is similar as other programming languages. And here it listed uh, several, like uh, sine, cosine, uh, log, x, uh, square, square root, and commonly use uh, constraints such as pi and uh, i or j for the square root of negative one. So I'll try to show you that. Let's clean this first. You can see there's the symbol pi has a value without, uh, without defining that. And then I can use the uh, sine pi divided by four. So that means the, the sine value is uh, the sine function is a built-in function in my lab. So I do not need to define by myself. It is predefined. I can just um, uh, type and use it. This is the same case for uh, others. The cosine is pretty the same. And we can see log. We can get the values. Subtract 10. All right. And there's the square root. You can try 100. So we got the square root of 10. I and J. So we try to establish a complex number. 2 plus 4 J. And we name it A. And then we got a variable called A in the workspace. It is a complex number. You can notice that MATLAB automatically changed the uh, complex symbol to, to I from J. And we can notice the, the I and J is almost uh, the, the same. So at this time, the I and J uh, can be exchanged. And we, we can also do some complex uh, operations, like A plus B, like that. So let's go to the next part. This is a plotting. Oh, I want to tell you one thing uh, to make sure all of you have, uh, have got that. <coughs> Do you know the difference between uh, with the semicolon or without the semicolon? Anyone has ideas about that? Yeah, it looks like uh, you are the MATLAB expert in this class. Uh, 
And when we try to uh, try to calculate something, we have two choices. One is to simply uh, type them in the command window. Another one is to create a script. So I'm going to show you how to create a, a script file. So we go to home and click new script. Or we can click the new and choose one of them. The basic one is the script. So we have created a new script. The file name is untitled2. And then we type something there. I guess uh, copy and paste them. To save that, uh, I often use the shortcut like Control S or uh, Command S. You can also use the save button. Click the editor editor tab and then click save. Then we've got an interface to let us input the file name. Since we are trying to plot something, um, I can name it at, like my plot and choose a space like um, I can choose here and click save. Then you've got a file named um, my underscore plot dot m. Dot uh, m is the extension, the file extension for the MATLAB script file. If we go into that folder, we can see that file. And it has the logo of MATLAB. If we want to run that script in the editor, The simplest way is to double click the editor and then click run. Then we got the result of the figure. It's a sine wave as a function of time. And we have the labels, the x label and the y label. We have the figure title. Another method to run that is to uh, type, type the file name in the command window. Uh, like this, uh, first we clear, clear that and use my plot. So this, uh, this is the same as click the run button. And you can notice uh, if you click the arrow up, you can recall the previous commands. This is very uh, handy to do something again and again. Sometimes we change some of the, uh, uh, the parameters in the in a script and we want to rerun that. So we can simply press the arrow up and uh, enter to rerun that. So let's see. If we use the double uh, percentage symbol, this is called a cell. And we, we can make uh, many cells, such as plot. We can just uh, define a number like this. For now, we can, uh, the script is divided by the double percentage symbols into two cells. And we can use the buttons to run that cell by cell. And we can click the run section. It means just uh, run the uh, highlighted part.
Oh, um, and if we select uh, one number, there and red uh, top, uh, red click, there's a, a button called increment value and a run section. And then we got this more interface. We can click the plus, and you see the that number is increased by one, and the cell is uh, it's rerun. We can dock this. Uh, I'll just uh, put it here. And then we can try to replace the plus button uh, many times. As I press, you can see the number of the uh, you can see the number is increasing by one. Uh, have you tried this before? Uh, anyone have tried this before? This is some um, some method to save time when we try to tune some parameters. And you can see the figure is updated each time I press the button. And we can also try the uh, multiply one. So much for this. This is uh, 2D plotting. And I, if we want to uh, break down the code, we can see the first line, t equals to uh, 0 to 43, and the step is 0 0.25. After we can try this. Uh, first, we clean. First, we clean the workspace, and then we select the first line, and then right click. There's a button called Evaluate Selection, and then we can just uh, run that line, uh, or you can select uh, several lines and do the same, then you can see the result of those lines. This way we can get an understanding of what the result of that line is. So we got a T, and T has 175 uh, double, double type numbers. And they are listed um, the sites the minimum number and the maximum number, uh, mean, median, something like that. If we double click the variable T, you can see the inside, those val it has those values. And we can check if it has a step of 0 0.25. And then we can try to run <coughs> the y line, then we got a variable called y, and it, it equals to sine t. The sine t means to, uh, to evaluate, to get the sine value of the each, of each uh, element in t. And we can double click y to see all the elements in y. The plot y, uh, comma, uh, t comma y means to to get a figure. And you can see the t is a vector, y is a vector. And plot t uh, comma y means we plot the we plot many dots and uh, line the dots together. 
So the first dot has a coordination of uh, x in the first x is the first value of t, and y is the first value of y. So the second dot uh, x equals to the second value in t, and uh, y equals to the second value in y. Then we use the title. We can put the title of the figure in this place, and it will show in the uh, it will show above the figure. And then we use the x label. It will show near the x axis to label the x axis, and y label is the same. They are very commonly used uh, plotting commands, and we often use them during making figures uh, for the for articles, for writing articles or some journal papers. So the next part is to use the variables, uh, use vectors to present some uh, polynomials. Let me copy the, uh, copy the command. First we clean that. Then we got the x. And this is the same. So it means the, a vector uh, represents a polynomial. This is an important part. We put the, uh, we put the value 2 inside the poly. So this equals to uh, put s equals 2 inside the x, s, uh, s to 4 plus 1. And then we put s equals 2 inside. Then we bound the value. This is to find the roots. You see, it, it takes some time to find those four roots. And this equation uh, should have four roots. This is another um, operation. Sometimes we use that in the signal processing. <coughs> the two lists are two signals, and we put them together. This is to divide two uh, polynomials. So there are several operations for polynomials. And then we go to the next part. 
uh, polynomials using the s variables. This is a part has much relationship with the uh, control uh, because the uh, tf uh, means uh, transfer function. If we put the uh, s equals to tfs, let's clean this first. Before we doing that, we need to install those toolboxes. Let me see if I have installed them in another MATLAB. And there's some uh, something about the uh, zero point. This is sixteen B. Now you see, I have pre installed the toolboxes for the transfer function in the MATLAB 16B. Uh, After running the s equals to tfs, we get a variable in the workspace, and it is called tf. If we, if we double click, we can see the inside numerators and uh, denominators. Both of them are a uh, uh, vector. If we change the vector inside, the x and the s will be, the transfer function will be changed. So let's try more commands, like, uh, let me copy this. After we uh, define the S, we can use the, we can use the S to build a transfer function, and you can see the MATLAB tells us this is a continuous time transfer function. If we go back to the workspace, we get we got uh, another variable called a polynomial in the workspace. If we double click that, we can see those two vectors are changed. And the numerator has some relationship with the, with the transfer function we have put. You can see the uh, relationship, the nine is at last, and uh, negative 2 is before s. Negative 15 is before uh, s squared. So they are related. Another function is the zero function. Using this function, we can get the roots of the polynomial. So this transfer function has, uh, has four has zero points. It means the polynomial has four roots. There are This part of word uh, code means we have two 
polynomials, and we get the uh, multiplication of that. So we go to the matrices part. Anyone has some ideas of uh, the difference between space and the semicolons? If we want to define a matrix, we can put it like this. I can copy and paste that in MATLAB. And then we got a matrix. So who can tell us the difference between space and uh, semicolons in the, uh, when we try to define a matrix? Who want to say that? Uh, basically, the space is for separating out the values in your, uh, in your uh, matrix. And then the semicolons are just sort of the new world of uh, values. Oh, exactly. So that's a difference. And we should remember the this symbol to to change the shape. We have E, and we should get C. Otherwise, we cannot continue to the next part. So let's. Mm. Oh, I need to tap this. C. And then we get D. This is the same. Uh, this is the same result uh, when we study multiplying matrices in mass. And this part is talking about the dot operation. We have matrix E, and we have matrix F. Both of them have four, value, four elements. And then we put a dot, dot multiply. That means uh, element-wise. We have E like this, one, two, three, four. And then E, two, three. E to three means uh, multiply that matrix uh, twice. And you see we have got the different values for using the dot and without the dot. And this is to get the inverse of the of a matrix. Again values roots. The next part is about printing uh, using this is the last part uh, getting help in my lab. So we can try this help.
if we don't know the meaning of some of the commands, we can use help. This can be used for some times. And I can tell you um, what I often do. If I, often, if I want to do something in my lab, uh, sometimes I don't know the commands. I often search in Google first. Uh, in Google, I type my lab, and, uh, such as plot, uh, plot a curve. And then I got um, search results, and those results I select one of the commands. Then I put the command in the search document in the MATLAB uh, hub file. Because MATLAB hub file is very well documented. So it means they have, they have detailed explanations on the syntax uh, descriptions. They have described the what's the meaning of the function and the parameters, how to choose the parameters. Also, they have examples. And their examples are um, really well tested. And we can simply copy those examples in MATLAB and run that. So that should be an efficient way to use MATLAB. So this is everything about the basics of MATLAB. We still have two more minutes before we have the break. So do you have some questions about that? Or do you, do you want to me, do you want to ask some questions um, about something uh, around this lecture around my lab uh, simulink or about the OS four? Well, what I want to tell you about the OS four is I have put. Uh, uh, OS4 folder in the cat course. I have edited that and tested that with the MATLAB 16A. So that means you should be able to run that uh, with, with uh, 16B and 17A. And by, by running that, you can get the drone uh, going a vertical square. Also, I have a video for that. This one, OS4 vertical square pass quadrilateral simulation. All right, so let's have a break for 10 minutes. Thank you. Please, let's continue this lecture. For this lecture, I'm going to show you uh, those things, the differential equation to sibling models, the sibling blocks, physics, OS4 slides, and OS4 demo. And the last is about the homework related to OS4. This is uh, a problem from the previous Midterm 
Uh, this is very important for, uh, for you because uh, Dr. Chen wanted me to explain you this. So, um, so we should focus on those two parts. Uh, this part is very easy to understand. This means uh, integration. So uh, we know uh, this uh, can, be ca can, can get this by integration. And this part means 2 minus uh, 3x equals <coughs> to x dot. So this is the same as this equation. Uh, 2 minus 3x equals to x dot. Uh, by looking into those two parts, uh, we can get this equation is the same as, oh, I may miss the uh, part, this part. This part is the same as the, this initial condition. So this simulink model uh, means exactly the same as this differential equation. This is uh, the first thing. So let's go back to the simulink basics. I'm going to show something from the uh, real simulink because this simulink tutorial is uh, kind of out of date. It still use those uh, figures in the uh, R2009 A version. So, so I'm going to uh, try to follow this tutorial. First, uh, we need to start the simulink. I try to use the command by typing simulink in the command window. It seems it's working. And this is a new page. We want to start a blank model. At this time, you need to make sure you are going to start a blank model, not a blank library. Create model. Another, another thing we need to know is where to get those blocks. Uh, one method is to click the block library, like this. And uh, another method is to click in a blank area and type something, like to workspace, then uh, select. You can get the block directly. Let's delete this. So we have the Simulink library browser. This is, uh, that is corresponded to this picture. So we build a simple model like this. In this model, <coughs> it has step transfer function and uh, scope. So let me try to redo that here. I would click in the blank area and tap step and hit enter. So it appears. And then transfer function. Click tap and select. Then it appears. The last one is Scope. 
So we just need to tap the first two letters, then it will appear. And this time, I can link them together. So it looks the same as uh, in, in the tutorial. Another method is to use the Simulink uh, library browser to find them. I'd like to show you briefly uh, what are they. The first, the first group is commonly used the blocks. Um, and I have used the constant. Um, this is gain. Gain means multiply uh, by something, by the number. And the in and out, uh, when you want to make submodels, you may use those in and out. Uh, integrator. In integrator is something like this. and product, scope. You have used the scope in this simple uh, demo. If you want to find the step, uh, do you know where to find the step? Who can say that? Uh, anyone has idea about that? Uh, um, my lab expert. Yeah, exactly. So we have another two methods except uh, uh, just type here. You can search here, SCEP, and step should be here. And another one, another method is to find it in sources. In sources, we have many kind of sources. Step. Step is here. Mm. And I think a, a good method to understand those sources is to try them. And try them use a scope. I can select uh, Control or Command C and con Control V or Command V to copy and paste that and then link it to, uh, to a step, uh, step sources. Then we can run that. Before we run that, we need to save it, like um, Simulink basics. So we try to run that. I click the run button. Um, it run very fast, so um, I, I think it's finished. So we double click the scope. You can see the curve like this. This is the step, and we can see the um, the time to go up is at one second, and the finish value is one. There are some parameters here. If we double click the step block, you can see the step time, it is set to one. So we can try to change that to uh, two. And initial value is zero. We can change that to uh, final value. If we'd like, we can change it to 0 0.5. After that, we run and see. So, so you can notice the step time has changed to 2, and the final value is changed to 0 0.5. This is a very good uh, method to learn what those south blocks mean. And another example is the pulse generator. 
because we may use that in our OS file simulation. So I create a path generator and copy and paste a scope block link. Then we can run to see what's inside, um, what's the output of the path generator. So it looks like that, uh, from one to zero and go back to one. It's a pulse. And then we can try to change that, change some of the uh, values. We think that period uh, 10 seconds is too long, so we change it to one. And the pulse width, we may want it to be 50. And then we hit OK, save, and rerun. So you'll see you have got a um, pulse like this. The period is one second, and the um, um, positive percentage is 50. Uh, 50 percent. Let me see if there is some other interesting sources. The clock outputs time and uh, constant. Sometimes we use constant. And for here, it, it says one, and we can put a variable, a MyLab variable in there. In this way, we can control that value through a MyLab variable. Um, I think we can try that. Um, I'm not sure if we have enough time. This is a constant. Let's just type constant. <coughs> and then we put it like a variable. Hmm. VAR. And we put VAR equals to four. Close one of them. Run that. So you see, the scope three is connected to the uh, constant variable, and the constant variable is linked to a simulink uh, variable called VAR. And that VAR is in the uh, MATLAB workspace. I have put it to four. So when you try to run the simulink, the scope gets the value of four. <coughs> Sometimes we need that to uh, use to use the MATLAB code to. Uh, to run the simulink model many times. And we want to change the value, some of the parameters in simulink each time. Let's continue with the tutorial. For this one, we have got the scope one. It's a step signal. And this is scope, uh, this is just called scope. And, and scope looks like this. So 
So we can see the transfer function has done, some, has done something to change the signal. Basic elements. Hmm. Lines. So the lines means uh, signal. We have modified the block parameters. For this one, they modified the parameters in the transfer function. So I'm going to do the similar thing to modify that. The denominator to 1, 2, 4. First I clean those part. So the second black area is 1, 2, 4. Then you see it, it appears like uh, now and then uh, it didn't show the equations. Then I try to drag and um, make the block larger. Then it will show that. S square plus 2s plus 4. So it's exactly the same transfer function. Running a simulation. When we run a simulation, there's something we can change, such as uh, the ten point zero is a simulation time. We can change that to twenty, and then we run that. So the simulation and time is twenty. There's something we can do in the scope, such as zoom, uh, zoom in, zoom out, uh, move. And, and reset. And we can put the rulers like in a real scope, move the two cursors. There's a configuration parameters interface from the CMLink menu. And we can find the same one. Model configuration parameters. And there we can set the start time, stop time. And server types, we have variable Type, variable step and the fixed step. And there are many servers we can use. Data input output. So we can get data from MATLAB uh, variables. And uh, we can output we can output some something like time, uh, some variables from the simulink to MATLAB.
I think we have used the hardware implementation before. Let me use the Arduino. So building the system. This this is a more um, complex one. We can another trick you can learn is to uh, label is to label signals. If we put the mouse uh, on one of the line and click, uh, double click, then you can put some labels like output. I can zoom that. So you see there's labels on the lines. So this part tells you how to get those blocks from sources. And the other mass operators, uh, operations. In the Simulink library browser, uh, let's go back to that and click mass operations. So you can see there's a bunch of mass operations, such as get the absolute value, add uh, division, gain, um, get the minimum uh, product, sign, subtract. This is the subtract. And there is also something called sync. Let's go through all the things. In the things, um, we often use the scope, scope control curves. Sometimes we use display. Display can show the current value. I think we have used that uh, during one of the experiment with uh, Arduino. Uh, and we, sh we have showed the uh, sensor value with the display, display block. To file, we will save the data to a file. It's, it's a MATLAB data file. And sometimes we use two workspace. Then we put the value in MATLAB workspace. We can use some average uh, filter later or plot with MATLAB. To modify blocks, um, commonly we use double click to change some parameters. If we want to use the um, PID controller. We can simply click and uh, type PID, and then we get a PID controller. Connecting blocks with lines, uh, drag, drag the mouse from output terminal uh, and to another input terminal. And then they got uh, feedback. This part, this part talks about taking variables from MATLAB. I, I have shown this before.
So that's all for the sibling basics. So let's go through the uh, OS4 slides. Uh, Dr. Chen and uh, Dr. Xu has some free books in the uh, free books and PPTs if you want to see you can use them and we know the MATLAB is often used for uh, computing and uh, uh, plotting you should know MATLAB has several parts in the GUI a current folder shows what files are in the current folder. Uh, the editor, you can use the editor to change the scripts. You can simply put some commands in the command window, like a calculator. The workspace shows what variables are stored in the MATLAB. The MATLAB menu can give you some buttons to, uh, to run the scripts. This size shows you how to create a new a MATLAB file, how to save the file. Sometimes we encounter some errors like this. Uh, at that time, we need to run MATLAB as administrator. There are two methods to run the code command window or a script. They are the same as the, on the tutorial. So we can go through them. How to start the simulink. I have showed most of them. So uh, if you need to uh, review that, you can go back to the slides. The flight dynamics deals with those uh, space-time mass. There are some basic equations about uh, force, momentum, energy, density. There are some basic equations in the aerodynamics. This is a quadrotor coordinate system. You have the uh, x y and z axis defined like that. Um, the following slides are from uh, the article, the research article. So I recommend if you want to uh, have a better understanding with them, it's better to focus on one symbol first. It's the rotor speed, and track uh, what are connected with that variable. So we can calculate the thrust force from that uh, rotor speed and the uh, hub force, drag moment, uh, rolling moment, ground effect. Uh, so we got all the moments and uh, forces. The rolling moments, uh, pitching moments, rolling moments, and all the forces along z-axis, x-axis, uh, y-axis. They are the equation of motion. It means we, we got the uh, acceleration or angular acceleration from the moment of forces with the, with the feature of the drone. This is the rotor dynamics. Let me try to set um, the rotor speed, and it needs some time to respond. Now we go to the 
OS for simulator. This is the first layer of the OS for simulator. You can see this. There are some uh, controllers, uh, error dynamic blocks, some initial conditions, delay. If we double click the control block and go inside, we can see there are three parts. The altitude control, uh, position control, and, uh, and another altitude control. The signals are from uh, those sensors, the sonar, IMU, vision, and another sonar. The following, the following slides shows you uh, the relationship between the code and uh, formula. So that, uh, that means uh, those blocks are built based on the formulas. So you can correspond to them. The rolling moments, the, the rolling moments so this part is the rolling moment and the pitching moment, the yaw moment, forces, rotations, and the speed set point. If we want to let the drone go a square pass, we need to change uh, some set points. <coughs> the initial condition let us to change where the drone is initially. So if we double click that initial condition block, we can see those uh, constants. So if we change the z, x, and y values, we can <coughs> choose where to put the drone initially. Now we go to how to set the altitude, uh, the altitude set point. If we double click the controller, the control, there's an altitude controller. And then it goes to a MATLAB function named out control. After that, we can find a, a MATLAB script file, a MATLAB function file in the folder. And then uh, we can get several input of that function. Then we, we located the first input has the comments named desired altitude. So you should go back to find that input. And, and we see this is the first input. And then if we go back to the first layer, the first input is just uh, that step block. So that's, that's, that step block uh, sets the altitude set points. If we double click that, we can change the parameters inside. But if we want to uh, make the step uh, input change according to the time, we may use a more complex source. So I have chosen the repeating sequence and set the time values, output values. Then we run the simulation. The homework is to try to let the drone simulator fly a square pass by changing the set points.
Now I'm going to show you how to let the simulator go a square pass. I have uploaded that file in the CAD course. So it says uh, OS4 vertical square. And what you need to do is to make a horizontal square in your homework. So you can change some of this folder and to, to meet the requirement of your homework. Let's clean this first and close the file. The first one is go to system, the first step go to system A dot model and open that. So if you remember how to change the altitude, um, it's here. I have replaced uh, that step uh, block with this repeating sequence. Yeah. And then use the uh, optimist initial. And it's done. After that, we can run this. <coughs> it should take some time until the until the simulation finish. We can click those blocks and see what's inside. <coughs> this is uh, talked on the slides. And the white, white set point is also changed to a, a repeating sequence. The X set point is, um, is a constant one. So if we fix the X to one, we just uh, change the altitude and the Y, we can let the drone move in a horizontal space. Do you have some questions about MyLab Simulink and OS4 while we wait for the simulation? This is level one. Uh, level two means if we double click some of the blocks and we go to level two.
Now the simulation is finished. So we can we can check the workspace and we got uh, those result data. We got the X, Y, Z. They have 2,000 and, uh, 2,501 elements. So, this file uh, shows the trajectory. You can run that to see. So it shows like that uh, where the helicopter goes, where the drone goes. If we want to stop that, uh, we can use Control C. And close the figure. Another thing to see is uh, OS4. In this interface, you can see the drone changing in your angle, uh, your angle, pitch angle, and the 3D view. This also takes some time to display all the data. So I'll just uh, stop that. But there is some method to show the next uh, step. In this place, it goes to the Vero. In, in the Vero script, we can simply evaluate those commands. Evaluate. Then we can see the result curves. The OS4 angles, angular, angular um, ratios. Show position data. Evaluate. This is a position data. And we can draw 3D. In this one, we can show that. If we click the rotation button, we can rotate the view. <coughs> so you see it's a vertical square. Well, I, I want to recite to original. And this is a vertical square. So that's all about the OS4 demo. Let's check your homework. Um, oh, not this one. The, the OS4 one. So 
it wants you to change the initial condition of the code. Uh, you can achieve the mission of reaching to height of three meter, hovering at three meters high for five seconds, then repeatedly visit waypoints of a horizontal square with set level of two meters. So that makes sense. I have given you the code for going a vertical square. And then you need to change that to let it go a horizontal square. That's what you, what you need to do for this homework. I think that that's all I want to say uh, as planned. So you are going to have a uh, 10 minutes break, and then we have the midterm. Thank you.